Right now, you're standing at the Memorial Union Terrace, looking out over Lake Mendota, but this lake has not always existed. Before the glaciers arrived in the Madison area, there were no lakes or swamps, but instead many streams, valleys, and ridges, similar to southwestern Wisconsin today. About 15,000 years ago, all of the Madison area, even where you're standing right now, was under about a quarter mile of glacial ice. Some glacial lakes are formed when the glacier gouges out the earth and the depression fills with water, but that is not the case for the Madison lakes. Instead, the lakes were primarily formed by the blocking of already present stream valleys by glacial drift. As the last glacier left the area, it deposited a layer of silt, sand, gravel, and rock up to 350 feet deep. This would have buried the Wisconsin State Capitol building almost 100 feet deep. These deposits dammed up the pre-glacial Yahara River Valley and formed the Yahara Chain of Lakes about 10,000 years ago. At this point, Lake Mendota was twice its present size. Since then, erosion of the exposed bluffs, building of sandbars, and deposition of sand, gravel, and boulders have created the lakes as we see them today. Even though Lake Mendota might appear to be an isolated body of water, it is not. Instead, it is part of a larger watershed. A watershed is an area of land in which all surface water drains to the same place. Lakes Mendota, Monona, Wingra, Wabisa, and Kiganza and the Yahara River are all part of the Yahara watershed. All water on the land in the Yahara watershed eventually drains to these lakes and the river. The Yahara watershed covers 359 square miles, includes many cities, villages, and towns, and is home to about a quarter of a million people. Watersheds come in all different sizes, and most watersheds are part of larger watersheds. The water from the Yahara watershed is part of the Rock watershed, which is part of the Mississippi watershed. This means that water from the Yahara watershed may eventually end up 1,000 miles away in the Gulf of Mexico. No matter where you're from, you live in a watershed. The positive and negative things that happen to the water where you live can travel downstream, literally, and affect someone else's water. Let's talk. Do you know what watershed you live in? Think about and discuss how the ways you interact with the watershed might impact people and ecosystems that live downstream. Also, can you think of instances where you've experienced an effect from something occurring upstream?